Afternoon guys, as always we'll start with the broadcast section that's got no embargo, followed by an embargo section for 10.30pm tonight. No live tweeting during the broadcast section and phones on silent please. Jamie. Thank you Anthony. Uh, good afternoon Ryan. Uh, just to kick us off with some team news and availability for tomorrow. Uh, pretty similar to, to last week, to be honest. We've got a few to a touch and go for the weekend, but yeah, we're, we're in a good place. I think uh, there's a sort of frustration from some fans at the moment that the side are quite unpredictable. You never really know what you're going to get with Spurs. You know, terrible start at Anfield, and then you come back, and then soccer punch at the end, much more organised against Palace, and then last weekend again, a bit of a question mark. It feels a bit like two steps forward, two steps back at the moment, doesn't it? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily say that. Um, yeah, we have been inconsistent probably all season um, on the pitch, but then I guess also sometimes off it as well. And I sort of said in these last two or three weeks, and I, I've remained pretty consistent that if you if you act a certain way and you stick to it and you really believe in what you're doing and, and continue to work that way, then that transfers onto the training pitch. Um, and that's where we are at the moment. We're we're working consistently here, and we're we're definitely doing that. We know we're doing that. And I guess the the final thing and the most important thing is the games at the weekend. You've made it pretty clear that you would like the job permanently. You feel you're ready for it. In the very back of your head, is there a tall concern that 31 years of age, having your dream job, there's nowhere really you can go after that? No, not at all. Listen, I, I've said that I, I feel ready to to help this club in in this moment, and I absolutely do. I I, I trust my my team. I, I trust the people at this club, and of course, those decisions are, are the club decisions. Um, but I remain confident in in who I am and who my coaching team are as people, and I really feel like we have a, a good connection with this club, the players, and and we can have Im- impact on in this short space of time um, and of course going forward that's that's things that are in the future um, not really on my mind at this moment in time we're, we're just trying to create something right now um, and we've tried to do that I think we're we're doing okay at that but of course it's important that we get results on the football pitch Have you had any players in particular and obviously you're very close with Harry say to you Gaffer would love you to get the job permanently? Oh, I, I think there's a there's a professional respect between us, and when we're in these walls, we're we're all working for the same thing. Um, with Harry, with with other players as well, and I think that's probably one of the most important messages that I've tried to get across to to not only the players but the staff members and everyone coming here that we're working for this football club, and we all need to be working for for this football club. And in order to be successful, we we all need to to be together and buy into something. Um, otherwise. <laughs> it can become difficult. So hopefully that, that will continue to happen in the next 10 days and, and also going forward as well. I think that's that's really important. If it is somebody to come in, would you want to stay on and be part of his backroom staff again? Or at that stage, do you need to maybe consider going somewhere else? Somewhere else? Yeah, like I said, I'm really not thinking about next season because if my attention goes to six, seven weeks' time, then... I'd be very stupid to take my eye off the ball now. I'm aware of the situation now. Um, I know me and my team are doing the best we can and I think we're doing we're doing good. Um, and then whatever happens in the summer and next season, there is definitely decisions to be made. But at this moment in time, we don't know what what they will be. Jake. Hi. You said a couple of players are touch and go. Do you mind saying who? No, obviously we had a couple that were out last week uh, that couldn't make the squad and... We're assessing them day by day. We've got a session in a minute, so yeah, we'll see. Okay. Um, obviously, two games coming up, the last two. What would you say then in your sort of personal and for the team aims for those last two games? Well, listen, I think the most important thing is is to get results because that's what we're working for, to get results. Um, but yeah, of course, at the same time, I would like to start seeing what we believe our team should look like. Um, it has been such a short space of time, but we we believe in the work we're doing. We we trust in the work we're doing, and even these next two games, inside the players can feel feel that change. And if that can transfer to the outside, then I think that would be an added bonus. But the most important thing, of course, is is getting the results. You said uh, to Jamie that in how you feel it's got it's, it's been good so far <coughs> since you've been um, in in charge. 
that is because um, the question from that would be what, like, why? What's what's been good in, in your opinion? Listen, I believe in the way I work. Me and my team. I, I have more belief now than I've ever had in my life that, that what we're doing and for this football club as well, the environment, the the feeling we want to try to create here. I believe in that. I believe in it so so much, and um, yeah, that's that's probably where it's coming from. Um, obviously, conceding early has been a problem in, in some of the games this season. I know, obviously, you weren't here the whole, you know, in charge the whole time. But how, how do you work on something like that on the training pitch or in meetings with players? Um, obviously, it's a tough one because it's been quite a common trend the whole season, not just in recent weeks, but the whole season. Um, and I just go back to like the consistency um, when you have the solid foundations and you're a team and you're strong, then yeah, it can happen. It can happen in football, but probably it happens less. Um, and I think going forward, that, that has, to be, has to be the thing, that a team that's working together that's strong and a football club that's strong, then it probably has to, happens a bit less. Thomas Frank's had a lot of good, good press, applauded it since taking over at Brentford. Is, that, is, is he maybe an example of someone like you, up and coming would look at and go, actually, that's, that's kind of how I want to do things, like, like he's done? Listen, of course, I, I respect him massively. Like, I respect any, any head coach or any manager because it's, it's a big ask. Um, obviously, the job he's done is, is fantastic. I don't need to speak about that because that's clear for, for everyone to see. Um, and I think Brentford as a football club have done a very good job as well so we're aware of that but our focus inside here isn't it isn't on other people it can't be on other people it has to be has to be on us and um trying to create a good feeling from from with with inside these walls obviously they'll be missing their front man their star <coughs> man um tomorrow so surely as far as you look at brentford and how to prepare for them it's got to be a different proposition without ivan tony in that team it changes some things but probably their biggest strength is they are a team um, they've shown that they're a strong team regardless of, of who's playing they have a very clear identity and they they play to that so um, yes of course they have a, an individual that isn't playing but that doesn't change in terms of our preparation for the game just lastly it's obviously the, the last home game of the season message to the fans ahead of the game yeah I mean it's important that they they see and feel a team that's trying to transfer energy to them um, and I think that's probably one of the most important messages that, that we've been trying to give to the players this week that we want energy we want to feel that energy with inside the stadium because they've been our fans have been fantastic this season they've they've stuck with us they've been with us the whole time and um, yeah we, we want to give them something to to feel good about thanks, thanks Jake Charlie right. I just about um, and how much the bonus that is getting him back yeah, it, it is a bonus um, because I, I think if we look at our, I don't say injury record, but this season we've probably never had all three fit and firing at the same time. Um, three, four, sorry, five, five midfielders. And I go to the front half players as well. There was periods in the start of the season where Richie was injured and then he'd come back and Decky was injured. So to create that competition and that that drive from the training pitch has, has probably been missing at times this season. Um, obviously, Eve's back now. We've, we've got Skippy, we've got Pape, Pierre, Rodrigo's out. So ideally, you have all of them fit, firing, and you can really drive that in training. But of course, we we signed Eve last summer transfer window, and um, we believe in him. And he, he's coming to the stage of the season now where, where he's back and... I think he's someone that we hope in the next couple of games, if, he, if he's selected to, to get on the pitch, can, can bring that energy. Do you think he can start? Is he ready physically? Listen, I, I think when players train um, and they train fully, then in my eyes they're fit to play. So I've got a decision to make. We've got players that we need to pick from, but he's certainly one that is available to play, yes. What does he bring, obviously, central midfielder yourself, specifically that some of the, you know, that some of the others maybe don't? I think every every one of our midfielders has has different strengths, and I think probably one of Eve's biggest strengths is is the ability to to get on the ball and kind of take the ball under pressure. He can drive. He can he can be a all round midfielder. Um, so we have we have good midfielders as well that can do the same thing. But yeah, I think he's an explosive player, and hopefully he can he can help us in these next two games. Just lastly, it, it feels as though the season maybe is petering out, but there's a lot to play for. 
Spurs are still? I mean, how important do you think it is that Spurs are in Europe? So there's there's always a lot to play for when you play for this football club. Um, when you represent this club, the, it's a big club to represent. And regardless of what situation the club are in, it's important. Um, and of course, we've, we're in a position now where there is there is a lot to play for. We realise that, we understand that. And um, yeah, hopefully our, our energy can can really show everyone how, how we feel right now. Thanks, Charlie. Finish with Ali, please. Obviously, from where he came from, he was such a highly rounded um, midfielder as well. It didn't quite work for him before the injury. Why do you think it didn't? And how do you unlock a player like that? How do you get the very best out of him? No, I think that's, that's quite normal when you come into a different style of play and a different system. Sometimes that can take time. Uh, we probably see it with players that come from overseas that they need to adjust a little bit to the Premier League but the same goes for an English player or someone who's been playing in the Premier League to, to have to adjust to a, to a new team and a new style of play. Um, obviously he's, he's had a few injuries this season as well which have probably halted that progress but listen, there's two games now and I can feel the the excitement from him on the training pitch that, that he's back out there, he's playing and he feels like he can help the team so um, hopefully he can do that. So th these conversations, I'm sure, will happen in the summer. Um, right now, it's, it's not on my mind. But what I will say about Clem is he's a type of character we want around the training ground. He's professional. He does it right. He's vocal as well. And um, the more people like that we can keep hold of and get in, then the more beneficial it is. OK, we'll end the broadcast section there, move on to the embargo section for 10.30pm tonight. Tom?